So just as a recap, yesterday we talked about imaginary numbers, right? Um, if you don't have to, if you don't want to on this part. All right, so somebody tell me what an imaginary number was. Uh, With the I, yeah, yeah, you can write that. You don't have to. Um, it's with the I. Imaginary number is with an I, right? So when we've got a square root and a negative number under the square root, we take the negative out and put the I in place of it, right? All right, so if I had, we said I is the square root of negative 1. If I had the square root of negative 36, that would actually be what? Plus or minus 6i. Yes? All right. So let's talk about what we're going to do with this. We're going to use, actually before we do, let me show you, let me show you dividing with imaginary numbers first. So this is new. Yeah, yeah, but we're going to add a little something to it before we multiply and add and divide those. But I want to I show you this first. If you're dividing by an imaginary number, okay, so let's say I have 2 over 3i. Why is that a problem? Technically, it's a radical. Remember, i is the square root of negative 1, and we can't have a radical in the bottom. So now rewind back to whenever we rationalize denominators, how do I get rid of a radical in the bottom? Okay, you multiply it, that's correct. So which part in this fraction is the radical? Which one, which part, the three or the I? The I, that's the only part that's the problem, right? Do we see that? So if I multiply, guys, I feel like I'm fighting some of you. If you would be quiet, it would be make this go much better. Um, if you multiply the top and the bottom by I, that's just like multiplying the top and the bottom by the square root of negative 1. Do we agree? So up top, I end up with 2i. And on the bottom, I have 3i squared. Well, what is 3i squared? We talked about this yesterday, too. Didn't we talk about this yesterday? Oh, no. Uh, no. OK. If i is the square root of negative 1, what would i squared be? Close. Negative 1. The squared, remember when we talked about opposite operations? And the square root, to get rid of a squared, we would do the square root and it cancels. Those are opposites. So if I square i, it takes care of the square root and just leaves me with negative 1. Okay? So what happens is when I have an i squared hooked to a number, it just changes the sign of the number. So for example, if I had 7i squared, well, if i squared is negative 1, that would make this negative 7. Okay? If I had negative 4i squared, that would really be positive 4, okay? So it drops and changes the sign is essentially what it's doing. So now back over here to my example of blue, what does the bottom become? Negative 3. Good job, y'all. So this is 2i over negative 3, and that is perfectly fine. It's fine to have an i up top. It's not fine to have it in the bottom. Okay? So when you see an imaginary in the bottom, then you multiply the top and bottom by i. We're going to use imaginary numbers to, to form what we call complex numbers. And this is kind of what we've been trying to get to in this section is the complex number part. So a complex number has two parts. It has a real number part. And a real number is just exactly what you're always used to. It's any number, two, five, a half, whatever. It's just a regular number that you're used to. And then to it, we're going to add, and I'm going to put plus or minus because we could subtract. We're going to add or subtract 
an imaginary number. And together, they're going to make a complex number. And this sounds complicated, but really, uh, I mean, 2 plus 3i, that's a complex number. Negative 4 minus 7i, that's a complex number. Okay? All those are complex numbers. It's got the two parts there. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. <coughs> so what we're going to do today is we're going to do operations with complex numbers. We're going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide complex numbers like this. It sounds worse than it is. It sounds worse than it is. Take a, a deep breath. I know it's Friday, but we're just going to push through it. I told y'all we could go through it yesterday or chunk it out. It is. It's a lot. So we'll, we'll do it today. It's fine. All right. So you've got to be able to recognize the difference in complex and imaginary. Complex has two parts. Imaginary just has one. Okay? All right. Let's add complex numbers first. So I'm going to do four sections. This is section one. Adding complex numbers, guys. This one is a lot, lot easier than what it sounds. Okay. I'm going to take complex numbers. So. Let's say I have 2 plus 5i If these were not i's and these were x's, what would you do? Well, this is not multiply. This is add. Oh, wait, add add this. Add this. Uh, Add what? What are you same, looking for? Uh, no one's in the, this, the same ones, right? Add the, the real number parts together and add the i parts together. And that's exactly what you're going to do. You probably remember from Algebra 1, we're really just combining like terms is what we're doing. So I have... A 2 and an 8, which together would give me what? 10. And now look at the i's. I've got 5i and negative 12i. Negative 7i. Negative 7i. Okay. Adding's easy, yes? That's your answer. That's all there is to adding complex numbers. That's it. <laughs> Yes, yes. All of them, John. Oh, no. Easy. <laughs> All right, so part two. Subtraction of complex numbers. Let's take those same two complex numbers. Um, what was it? 2 plus 5i? And instead of adding them, let's subtract them. 8 minus, what was it? 12i. If my pen will write. <coughs> so, <coughs> this is a little different because I'm subtracting in the middle, okay? So, when you're subtracting, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, and you've, I'm sure that at some point you've heard of this as well. I'm going to do, and this time I'm going to look at whole sets of parentheses. I'm going to do same, yep, change. But here's the thing, because there's a parentheses here, when I change the next parenthesis, I have to change everything in parentheses. So I'm going to say change all. So same change, change all. So I change the middle, that means the 8 becomes negative, and I change that to plus. Well, all of a sudden, I have an addition problem again, right? 
Okay. So that's all you do, and then you combine like terms. So look at the real number parts. 2 and negative 8 give me what? Negative 6. And 5i and 12i would give me... That is it. I got it. Multiplication. So we're increasingly getting a little bit more difficult each time, and it's not that any one is hard. It's just that um, it takes a little bit more with each step. Okay. If you think about them like x's as you go, though, it'll make it a little bit easier for you because it's the same kind of concept. So if I have, I'll do my same two um, complex numbers. 2 plus 5i. This time I'm going to multiply, what was it, 8 minus 12i. Okay. Notice the difference here. There's no sign in the middle. Do you see that? There's nothing in the middle. So that means multiply. How do I multiply, and we just did two things that look like this. How do you multiply two binomials like this? Um, yes. We're going to distribute. FOIL. Distribute however you learned it, okay? And we're probably pros at this now because when we rationalized the denominator, we did that a lot, right? <laughs> yes. We multiply by the conjugate, remember? Okay. So let's do this. 2 distributes to everything in the second parentheses. What is 2 times 8? 16. How about 2 times negative 12i? Okay, I've distributed now the first term. I can move on to the second term. What is 45. five? Yep. And now the two last terms, 5 times negative 12i? Ah, I'm sorry. Negative 60i squared. Is that 40? That's a 40. Okay. So now, this has an extra step, okay? Do you see the i squared there? I need to handle that. I need to take care of it. So here's what I do when I see them. When I see them, I go, wait, I know what i squared does to a number. What does it do? Changes the sign of the number. So this is not negative 60i squared. It's plus 60. Now I can get my like terms together. Look at the numbers without an i. What do you have? 16 and 60. So together that gives me what? 76. Wait, why didn't you change the 24 to the positive? That's 24i, not 24i squared. It's only the i squares that change. How about tw negative 24? Guys, how about negative 24i and 40i? 16i. Minus. Positive because the bigger one's positive. That's it. That's your answer. 3 minus 5i times 2 plus 4i. All right, first terms, take the 3 and distribute it. What do you get? We're still multiplying, we'll do division x. What do you get? 6 plus 12i. Does that confuse anybody? Go to the second term. Yep, but watch your sign. So negative 10i, how about here? Negative 20 i squared. What happens? This 20 i squared, this negative 20 i squared becomes positive 20. Yep. 
So now look at your real numbers. I got a six out front and a 20 on the end. What do I have? 26. You've got a 12i and a negative 10i plus 2i. Easy? Nothing new. It's just the only new part is the i squared part, really. Okay? All right. One more. Y'all stay with me. One more. One more. No mas. No mas. One more. Division. Okay. Let's do our same. Two. Two plus five i divided by eight minus 12i. What's the problem with my fraction? There's a radical on the bottom, okay? I need to get rid of it, but this time, this looks, it's not just an imaginary on bottom, it's just an imaginary, I just multiply by i and that's easy. This is a complex on the bottom. So I'm adding or subtracting a radical. So rewind back, so when we were rationalizing denominators, how did you get rid of it? Multiply it by its conjugate. Remember? What's a conjugate? 8 plus 12i. Change the sign. Okay, so top and bottom conjugate. So here, and again, you'll see this just turns into a great big multiplication problem. If I do it to the bottom, I've got to do the same thing to the top. Okay? It becomes a double foil problem. I got a foil up top, I got a foil down below. Y'all ready? No. All right. The sign in the middle changes. Only the sign in the middle. All right. Two times eight. Two times twelve I. Five I times eight. And 5i times 12i. I'll come back and take care of those i squareds in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and boil out the bottom while I'm here. On the bottom, 8 times 8. 8 times 12i. What's 8 times 12? 96. Negative 12i times 8? Negative 96i. And negative 12i times 12i. I told you this is not, it's not the division is hard, the division is just involved. And all of them aren't going to have a complex up top. This might just be 2 over 8 minus 12i. But you still have to do the conjugate because of the bottom. You've got to get it out of the bottom. All right, let's look. I'm going to go ahead and take all my i squareds, and that's going to be the first thing I do. I'm going to scratch them out and change the sign. So 60 i squared becomes negative 60. And Negative 144i squared becomes plus 144. Up top. Now we're going to combine, yep. Up top. Real numbers. I've got a 16 and I've got a negative 60. What does that give me? Negative 44. Right? That's this and this together. How about the eyes? 64 I. Um, I've got a question. Yes, sir. How does 16 by minus 4 equals negative 45? 
16 minus 60. Look at the bottom. Real numbers. I see a 64, I see a 144. 208. How about imaginary parts? And they should cancel out. That's what happens. The I is gone in the bottom, and that's exactly what I wanted. There's no I in the bottom. Does that make sense? How is what, John? 64 plus 144? 